Good morning, keto peeps. Today we are going to scramble some eggs. So this is based sort of on the egg fast uh, concept, I guess. A lot of people like to do that egg fast. I find that after two days, I cannot do any more eggs. Uh, they just become really disgusting to me after I've been eating them for two days. But we're going to do a little thing that I like to do uh, that I learned online. It's a very nice way to scramble your eggs with fat. Now I like my eggs because I had bariatric surgery. I like my eggs to be really soft, almost to the point of not all the way cooked, kind of jelly-ish. Um, it helps with uh, getting them in and keeping them down. So, um, and anybody that's had bariatric surgery can tell you that a case of the phonies or something feeling stuck is not a nice feeling. So I've got my heat at about a four and I put two eggs in a little pot and I'm just gonna whisk them. So I use a whisk for this whole process. So I heated the pan up a tad, not too much. And what I do is I'm going to continuously whisk the whole time that I do this process. So with the egg fast, you're supposed to do a certain amount of eggs with a certain amount of fat and a certain amount of cheese. So what I do is um, for every egg you eat, you're supposed to eat uh, a serving of fat, which is like a tablespoon. So this is two tablespoons of Kerrygold and I am going to pop that in. Now usually I would melt it and then whisk it in but um, I just don't have time. So I'm just going to put it in and whisk my eggs around it and it will, as it warms up, it will, now you could, you could probably melt it in the mic for like 20 seconds in a plastic cup and get it softened up beforehand. I just don't have patience. Every once in a while, put it back on the heat. Let it get a little warmer. You don't want the eggs to start scrambling yet. And also, you're going to want to add a little bit of salt. I got my Himalayan in my salt shaker. Um, add a little bit of that. Put it back on the heat. Continue to scramble. Continue to whisk, I should say. Um, I really like this type of scrambled eggs. I've always liked scrambled eggs, but I find that anybody else makes them but me. A lot of times they're inedible because people seem to think like you have to overcook scrambled eggs. You really don't. So putting the butter in with the eggs and then scrambling them with the butter um, seems counterintuitive. You might want to melt the butter first in the pan. You don't really need to. I suppose you could. Um, and putting this much butter in with the eggs seems counterintuitive too. I would have never used two tablespoons of butter with two eggs. That just seems like a lot. But I'm wanting to get all my fats in all at once in one small meal. Um, the only thing I had this morning before the gym was black coffee with some salt. And I found that after my workout, which this morning was just focused on cardio, uh, I did some sprinting, which is why I look greasy, <laughs> and um, some walking and sprinting. Um, I didn't really do any weights or anything today. I'm going to put in a little uh, black pepper to taste, whatever you like, or if you don't like pepper, don't do it. Put it back on the heat, continue scrambling. Now my butter is all melted now. So I like to wait, and it's going to start to get a little foamy looking on the edges, I guess. This does take time. Um, some people like to just have their eggs done in like just one second. Actually, there's a lot to be said for taking your time when it comes to cooking eggs and cooking meat. 
Um, a lot of times when you take your time, they come out better. So we continue to, every once in a while, take it off, continue mixing. It'll get a little denser looking, a little darker. Just keep on going. This usually takes about four to five minutes. And you'll start to see egg bits. That's when you're getting close to being done. Just shoot at the edges. Just keep on stirring. So mine's starting to get a little bit. That's where the proteins are starting to uh, react with the heat and fold up and give us our solids. So if I was really doing an egg fast, which I'm not, then I wouldn't add anything else to this. I would have some cheese with it, which I do have um, an ounce of cream cheese that I will be mixing into this once it gets a little more dense. I like to do that right at the end. It makes it so that it's just out of this world creamy. It doesn't even really taste like eggs anymore. It's sort of like a treat, like a cheesecakey treat. Uh, it's just not sweet, that's all. But I prefer savory in the morning anyway. And you could, um, if you wanted to just make this as your breakfast uh, and put maybe a veg with it, maybe some tomato or, you know, uh, I don't know, anything. And it's so soft, it could be almost like dip. I mean, you could use this, I mean, if, if you're cool with that, you know. You could sort of use this as a dip and use cucumbers, you know. I love me some cute. So you could use cucumbers to like put it on those. Yeah, you never want to stop um, whisking it because then what will happen is the bottom will turn into one big egg patty. So I just turned up the heat a little bit to like five, just to speed things along. There's sort of a moment of truth where it goes from being liquid to suddenly it's more like pudding, which is right about now. So it's about a pudding consistency and then you want to take it off the heat. But you don't want it to overcook, and the heat from the pan will continue to cook it. Yeah. So I'm going to turn my heat off. That's all I'm really going to cook it. Just to the consistency of like pudding. Can't really see it that well. There is still heat on the stove though. So I'm going to take my one ounce of cream cheese, I'm going to add that in. And then I'm just going to pop it back on. Now the, the coolness, the coldness of the cream cheese will cool down the, the eggs a tad before it melts. So I just whip, keep on whisking it with the pan on the heat until the cream cheese is dissolved. Which only takes about 10 15 seconds because the eggs are very warm. And then you want to, to whatever consistency that you like, just keep stirring with the heat off because the heat from the stove will continue to cook the eggs. So it's about the consistency of grits now or oatmeal, like a thin oatmeal. Put the cheese in there, and I think I'm just about done. Alright, so I have a bowl. Now, check this out, y'all. These were the green onions I bought a few weeks ago at Kroger. You know, regular size, little green onions. Holy shit bags. Look at these babies. I got these for 89 cents at Walmart. Look at the size of those bulbs. Holy crap. So, wow, that's gonna last me forever. And I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna need a bigger 
jar to put them in in the fridge. I don't even know if I can stand those up in my fridge. I'm going to have to cut them down. I don't know. What I would do is I'll cut the ends off, take my uh, kitchen shears, and into a baggie, I would cut them into sections and then freeze them. That way, because these won't keep, unless you can keep the bulbs wet, um, these won't keep for a long time once you've cut the greens off. They'll become really mushy and icky. So if you cut them up and put them into a bag and freeze them, you can use them whenever for whatever. So I might do that. I'll keep about half of them in a jar in the fridge just for fresh use in salads and stuff, but the other half can definitely be for cooking. And, uh, and I bought some strawberries. They were on sale today, partially because they got some brown spots. And I got some Marie's Chunky Blue Cheese because the man goes through that like you would not believe. Oh, don't forget to take your eggs off the heat. Whoops. And that's about it for now. These just freaked me out. Huge. I think there's a GMO in there somewhere. You know there is. All right, so that was my scrambled egg uh, breakfast that I'm going to get on right now and uh, have a cup of coffee, probably black with this, and enjoy my morning on my deck. All right, y'all. Take care. Bye.